AP Calculus AB, uh, <clears throat> Unit 8, Day 6, Office Hours. These are all the answers, odds and evens. So odds and evens. So I'll leave them here for a second. You can check your answers. Okay, odds and evens. <clears throat> Pause the video if you need to. So two different pages. All right, let's try them out. Okay, let's see. Now, certain ones you're supposed to use geometry. That means just draw a picture and use like area of triangles and squares and things like that to um, to figure out the area under the curve to help you uh, figure out what the integral is. So, let's see. Problem. 14 is, it says value through integrals by making the appropriate substitution. So we've been doing these for a while. Now what we could do, there's two ways. We could say u equals 2x and uh, du equals 2dx. And we say, well, we don't want the two. Um, so then that would be 1 half du over u. That'd be one half natural log the absolute value of u plus c, and then that would give you one half natural log of the absolute value of two x plus c. Now, really, at the beginning, we could have just rewritten it, bring the two out in front because it's just a number, and then just say one half natural log the absolute value of x plus c. Now it looks different. But it's actually the same answer. Um, the, the difference would get figured out in the C value because um, rules of exp uh, rules of logs say that you could write this like this. You can break logs apart. You can bring them back together. So really, this one has an extra 1 half natural log of 2, which would get bundled up into the C value here. So depending on how you did it, did it you get different answers. So it's kind of interesting. Um, 16 is the integral of dx over 1 plus 16x squared. Now, you know, something to try, at least in your head, is to be like, oh, let's just go with the whole denominator. And then du equals 32x dx. And that's not going to work because we don't have an x up here. So then you're like, well, I got to get more creative. Sometimes it's as simple as that. So you don't want to pass those up. Uh, maybe this is inverse sine. What would I plug in here to get something squared? 4x. That's going to be your u. u equals 4x. du equals 4dx. I don't want the 4. So it's going to be 1 fourth du over 1 plus u squared. And this has to be a 1. If it's not, you got to fix that first. But it was already a 1 this time. It's going to be 1 fourth inverse sine of u plus c. So then our final answer, we write it back in terms of x, is 1 fourth inverse sine of 4x plus c. Got to have plus c. All right. Okay, so that's 16. Uh, next one is 18. So 18 is the integral of x over the square root of 4 minus 5x squared dx. Now, at first glance, if you want to make this harder than it had to be, you might think, oh, this is going to be inverse tangent. i got to make that a 1. And, but we should always just go and try the denominator or try, you know, what's in the denominator. du equals negative 10x dx. This works perfectly. I want an x dx. I don't want the negative 10. That's an easy fix. This is a number. Multiplying your answer. So I put the negative 1 tenth in front, and it's going to be du over the square root of u. I'm going to rewrite this as u to the negative 1 half. It's a power rule. 
So then that's going to be negative one tenth u to the pos one half divide by the new exponent multiply by the reciprocal plus c, and then final answer should be one fifth square root of four minus five x squared plus c. And I'm just going to check my answers as I go. Looks good. Looks good. All right. Okay, 20 is the integral of 1 over parentheses 1 minus 3x squared dx u equals 1 minus 3x du equals negative 3 dx. Don't want the negative 3. Okay, this is not inverse sine. This is uh, negative 1 third. And it's going to be du over u squared. It's not natural log. This is a power rule. u to the negative 2 du. That's going to be negative 1 third. u to the negative 1 divided by the new exponent plus c equals uh, positive 1 over 3u plus c. But then we want it in the original variables, 1 minus 3x. And you could just put it in parentheses. And that's fine. You can leave it like that. You could distribute it if you want. You know, you could say 1 over 3 minus 9x plus c. Sure. Okay. That's fine. Okay. All right. 22 is x cosine 3x squared. So u equals 3x squared. Clearly what's inside something else, inner function. d equals 6x dx. Don't want the 6. So we're going to do 1 sixth cosine u du. So that's going to be 1 sixth sine u plus c and then we want to write it back in terms of the original variable 1 6 sine of 3x squared plus c 24 uh, integral of x cubed e to the x to the fourth dx so u equals x to the fourth du <coughs> equals 4x cubed dx. Don't want the 4, but x cubed dx is perfect. So that's going to be 1 fourth <clears throat> e to the u du. Antiderivative is going to be antiderivative e to the u is e to the u plus c. Final answer, e to the x to the fourth plus c. All right, okay. 50 says uh, evaluate each integral by first modifying the form of the integram and then make an appropriate substitution if needed. So on these ones, it's, uh, I think they're kind of saying like, hey, maybe try and simplify it, right? Like uh, we could bring this in here using log rules, it would be e to the natural log of x squared dx. And then e and natural log of x, natural log are inverse operations. So now it's just going to be x squared. Now it's easy. It's just x cubed over 3 plus c. So sometimes you might just consider cleaning things up. 52. Uh, is the integral of cotangent of x dx, which we don't have an antiderivative for. Some of you guys might be like, yeah, that's uh, that's uh, cosecant squared. Nope, wrong way. You're taking the derivative. So what you might do sometimes is entertain the possibility of rewriting it in terms of something else, maybe sine over cosine. And if you do that, you say, oh, well, you could be sine x, the derivative, the denominator, D would be cosine x dx, and that's perfect. Cosine x dx. Usually the denominator is a good place for your u substitution. So this is going to be du over u. So this is natural log of the absolute value of u plus c, which is mean natural log of the absolute value of sine x plus c. Do we need these absolute values still? 
Yes, sine is positive and negative. It's not always positive, not always negative. So we need the absolute values here. So those are the problems from page 393. Now we're going to look at the problems, and those are just more practice with integrating. Those are called indefinite integrals. But now we're going to look at 414, where we're going to start to do definite integrals. So 11, it says, in, these, in 11 through 14, sketch the region whose signed area is represented by the definite integral and evaluate the integral using an appropriate formula from geometry where needed. So you're supposed to sketch it, okay? So um, on 11 part A, we're trying to integrate 0 to 3 of x dx. And so that's just a line. We could just graph that line. And okay. All right, so this is just a line with a slope of one. And so for part A, we're trying to find the area from zero to three. Now it has a slope of one, so this should be at three comma three. All right, y equals x. And this is 0, 0. We're trying to find the area from here to here. It's just a triangle, so show your work. 1 half base times height equals 9 halves. That's part A. Part B, um, we're doing the same graph, but we're going from negative 2 to negative 1 of x dx. So negative 2 negative 1. So this is going to be negative 2, negative 2. I'm trying to find this. Now this is going to come out uh, just to there. This is going to come out negative because it's below the x-axis. Now that's a trapezoid. I mean, you could do a big triangle minus a little triangle if you want. I think a trapezoid is going to be faster. So the area of trapezoid, we talked about this recently, it's going to be negative just because it's below. This would be the average of the bases. The bases are 2 and 1 divided by 2. Average of the bases times the height. The height is this distance between the parallel sides, 1. So it's going to be 3. It's going to be negative 3 halves. Okay? C says uh, negative 1 all the way to 4. So negative 1 all the way to 4, negative 1 all the way to 4 is going to be this little triangle, uh, which is going to come out negative, negative 1 half base times height. And then the other part is another bigger triangle, 1 to 4. Uh, the base is 4 and the height is 4. So it's going to be negative 1 half plus 8 is 7 and a half or 15 halves. Uh, D, we're doing the integral from negative 5 to 5, x dx. And so negative 1 half base times height over here, negative 5 is going to be 5, and the height is going to be 5. Plus this one over here is going to be 1 half base times height, it's going to be 5 times 5. So you're going to get negative 25 halves plus 25 halves equals 0, which I don't think you should think is surprising because don't you get... Two triangles are the same size, one's negative, one's positive. So aren't they going to just cancel each other out? Okay, 12a. So we're integrating 0 to 2 of 1 minus 1 half x dx. So that's another line. So we should try and graph it. And it has a y-intercept of 1, and we're going down 1 over 2, so that's the line. If we're going 0 to 2, well that would just be this triangle right here, so that would be 1 half, base is 2, height is 1, the answer is 1. Part B says we're going to integrate from negative 1 to 1 of the same line. So I'm, I think we could probably get away with just using the same picture. 
So negative one to one, it's just a, it's a trapezoid, right? It's that trapezoid right here. So I'm gonna do average of the bases. The bases are, if you plug negative one in here, um, you get positive one and a half. So one of the bases is three halves. The other base, if you plug one in, you get one half. The other one's one half. And then you divide by two, you get the average of the bases times the height. The height is the distance between them, which is two. So these twos could cancel. You're going to get four halves, which is two. C, we're integrating from two to three of one minus one half x dx. So we're going from two to three. So we'll find this little area. It's going to be negative. Plug three in here, get one minus three halves is one half, negative one half. So uh, it's a triangle, but it's gonna be negative because below one half, the base is one, the height is one half. And so you get negative one fourth for that area. Uh, D, we're gonna integrate from zero to three of one minus one half x dx. So that's going to give us this first triangle, one half base times height minus the next one because it's negative, negative one half, one plus one half. So we pretty much did both these triangles separately before. But if we combine them together, we get positive three fourths <clears throat> for that area. So I was just using pure geometry in those. 13a uh, is the is the integral 0 to 5 of 2dx. So what does that look like as a graph? That is a flat line, horizontal line going through 2. So if you want to integrate from 0 to 5, it's the area of a rectangle. So on these ones, you should be graphing these. This, this is part of your work. So it's going to be one half. It's going to be base times height. The base is five. The height is two. The answer is ten. B, totally different graph. Zero to pi of cosine x dx. Okay, well I don't know about finding the area of a cosine curve, but let's graph it and maybe we can make come up with an idea. So cosine goes like that, right? That's 2 pi. I should be good at graphing these trig functions. Okay, now pi is right here. So we're trying to find the area from here to here. Now, these areas are the same. I didn't draw great. This one's positive, that one's negative. So I'm pretty sure the answer is going to be 0, kind of like those triangles we just did. C, we're going to do the integral from negative 2 to the, of the absolute value of 2x minus 3 dx. So let's try and graph this. Graphing absolute value functions, um, you graph the line, negative 3, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. So that's, kind of, that's the line without the absolute. The absolute value makes the negative part go up. So this is going to be up here at 3. And the graph is going to look like this. It's going to be this V graph. Okay, now uh, we're supposed to do negative one to two. So negative one would be over here to two would be like right there. So we get a triangle here and then we get a little tiny triangle there. So it's gonna be one half base. This base, I mean, if you plug, I think this, you could figure out what this X intercept is. It's one and a half, it's three halves. So the base, is going to be five halves. The height, if you plug in negative one into this, you get negative five. The height is five. Um, and then we have this other little triangle whose base is going to be one half because this intercept is at one and a half. And whose height, if you plug two in here, you get a height of one. So we're going to get 25 fourths plus one fourth equals 26 fourths equals 13 halves. 
So that one's kind of that one's a little more difficult. Part D, we're doing uh, the integral from negative one to one of the square root of one uh, minus x squared dx. Now I don't know if you guys re you know remember this graph, but this is a conic section, and if you square both sides and change some things a little bit you might get something closer to what you're used to. Add x squared to both sides. This is a circle, okay? But when you go to graph it, because we started with this version, it's only the top half of the circle. So it's a circle centered at zero, zero, with the radius of one. And it's just the top half of the circle. Top half of the circle. We're trying to find the area between it and the x-axis. Well, that's just half a circle. That's one half pi r squared. So that's gonna be pi over two. Okay. All right, keep going. Um, see 14. And sometimes this is maybe the best way to integrate. Just use some geometry. So 14 part A is this function. And so then, uh, let's see. So we're gonna go from negative 10 to negative five, it's just a it's just a flat line going through six. So the area underneath it is just a rectangle. So it's just going to be base times height. The base is five. The height is six. It should be positive. It's positive thirty. <clears throat> B is the integral of negative pi over three to positive pi over three of sine x dx. And so sine curve looks like this, right? And that's two pi. And that's pi. Pi over three would be like, that's pi over four. Pi over three, no, that's pi over two. This is pi over two. So pi over three is like right around here. But then we're going to negative pi over three. And the area of these two chunks are the same. But one's positive, one's negative, so the answer should be zero. I don't really know what the area of each of those regions are individually, but I know together they're going to cancel each other out. C, zero to three of the absolute value of x minus two dx. Can we do a quick sketch of this graph? This is a one, a quick way to do this one is it's a V graph, absolute value with the slope of one on both sides, that's been shifted to the right two units because the extra minus two on the inside, so it looks like this. That's what the graph looks like. And we want to know the area from zero to three. So it's these two triangles. So it's going to be um, one half base times, if you plug zero in here, you get two base times height plus one half. The base, the next one's one. The height, if you plug three in, you get one. So this is going to be two plus one half, five halves. Uh, D, zero to two of the square root of four minus x squared dx. Again, after our last one, this should remind you of a conic section. So if we square both sides, y squared plus x squared equals four, it's a circle with the radius of two centered at the origin. And it's the top half only. So that's the whole thing, but it's just the top half. And we want that area right there. So it's just gonna be one half pi r squared, the radius is two. So that's gonna be two pi for your final answer. So that's using, oh shoot, 
actually we're only supposed to do zero to two. So it's just a quarter of a circle. So it's just gonna be pi. It's a quarter of a circle. Okay. So that's using geometry to help us find the answers. Um, next one, it says, 15, it says, use the areas shown in the accompanying figure to find these answers. So, um, the picture, which might be worth drawing once for this whole group of problems, goes like this. And it has some letters here, A, B, C, and it has this area and it says that the area of this one is 0 0.8 and the area of this one is 2.6 but you have to treat that with a negative which we'll probably add that ourselves and the area of this one is 1 1.5 so giving you all these areas and so part a they say well what's the integral of the function from a to b well that's just this area right here that's just 0 0.8 right in part b we want the integral from zero uh from b to c well, B to C is this right here. It's 2.6, but it's got to be negative because it's below the x-axis, right? C says the integral from A to C of f of x dx. And so that would be all of this. That would be the 0 0.8, but plus the negative 2.6. And so we would get negative 1.8 total. D is the integral from a to d of f of x dx. So that's this whole thing. So that's 0 0.8 plus negative 2.6 plus 1.5 is being negative 0 0.3. So we're just using those areas given to us in the picture. 16, each part evaluate the integral. Um, so 16. Um, they give us a piecewise function, 2x, x is less than or equal to 1, and 2, x is greater than 1, piecewise function. In part A, they say it's integrated from 0 to 1 of f of x. Now, we could use geometry here. So we could graph this. I'm going to graph it over here. Got a little room. Okay. So I'm going to graph this piecewise function. We've done this in previous chapters. So 0 up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. So that's that graph. This other one's a flat graph that goes through 2. And then um, I'm going to kind of darken in where each one exists. So they, they, they change at 1. So this is to the left of 1 and the solid dot right there, this is that graph. And then to the right of one, it's this guy. It's an open dot, but it's right on top of that solid dot, so you can't even see it. So that's the graph. So from 0 to 1 is the area of that little triangle. So that's 1 half base times height is 1. B is the integral from negative 1 to 1 of f of x dx. And so negative 1 to 1 um, you got another little triangle here. That one's below the x-axis, so it's negative 1 base times height, 1, 2, plus the other triangle, 1 half base times height. And so we get negative 1 plus 1 is 0, which should make sense. They're to both the same size. One's positive, one is negative. C, we're going to do 1 to 10 of fx dx. Now, what we have to do... Well, 110 is just that. It's just this area. It's just a big, long rectangle. Base times height, the base is 9, right? If you go all the way 10, the base is 9. The height is 2. The answer is 18. D, integral from 1 half to 5. So 1 half is like right here. So that's trapezoid. Um, with bases 1 and 2, average of the bases, 
times the height is one half. Okay, so that's that one. And then the rest of the way, one to five is a rectangle. Base is four, height is two. So this is gonna be three fourths plus eight, which is gonna be 32, 35 fourths. 35 fourths. So that's how I would do those. So we're really not doing any like actual integration yet. We're just using pictures to do, you know, given, you know, values and we're not really using antiderivatives yet. On uh, 17 it says find negative one to two of fx plus two gx dx. So, and then it says if negative one to two of fx dx equals five and negative one to two of gx dx equals negative three. So what we should do here is we should break the integral up, which we're allowed to do. We could do negative one to two of fx dx on its own, plus you can move the two out in front and integrate this one separately from negative one to two dx. And now we can just plug these values in. They gave us this one was five, plus two times they give you the next one was negative three. The answer is negative one. I guarantee I'm gonna give you guys problems like that on your next test. 18, similar idea, one to four of three f of x minus g of x dx. And then it says if one to four of f of x dx equals two and one to four of gx dx this is good stuff right down too i mean this is these are actually not that much work because they're giving you a ton of the answers already so here you break it up you say okay well, let's do three times one to four of fx dx minus the integral of one to four of gx dx so this is a property of definite integrals that you can break them up like this so that's going to be three times two minus ten it's going to be 6 minus 10 equals negative 4. Uh, 19, similar kind of problem. 1 to 5 of fx dx if 0 to 1 of fx dx equals negative 2 and 0 to 5 of fx dx equals 1. So what we could do is you say, well, you want one to five. So wouldn't that be the same thing as zero to five fx dx minus zero to one, right? Wouldn't that give you the area in between one and five? So that would be one minus negative two would give you three. 20, this is fine, three to negative two of fx dx if negative two to one of fx dx equals two and one to three of fx dx equals negative six. So, I mean, we got some different options here. One of the ideas, a couple ideas we learned. One, this would be the same thing as negative, negative two to three. If you flip, the limits, you get the same answer, but negative. And I'm doing that because I see these guys, if I add these guys together, negative two to one, fx dx plus one to three, one of the rules that we learned in property of definite intervals is that if the top of one matches the bottom of the other, then you just get the combination of them, negative two to three. So that means negative two to one was two, one to three was negative six, that's gonna give you negative four. So we know that this is negative four, but we know the answer we're trying to get is the negative of that. So then that gives you positive four for the answer. So that one was a little interesting. Anyways, good stuff, properties of integrals, definite integrals, area under curves, um, not too much like actual integrating with antiderivatives yet and plugging limits and things like that, but just some good basic stuff to help you